let us start this. Anything? Any other question? No question. So we'll start with our Abhidhamma. 58 slide is in open. Sir, so I have opened last week's slide only. Ah, but I had sent new ones also. Ah, but I'll get some changes in there. Minor small changes. Okay. Not much, you can open the same. If you don't have downloaded it, you can open the same. This decisive support. Hmm. So we had, uh, we had in fact read a part of it, so I'll quickly go through that again. Open Esaya Pachyo. Purima Purima Kusala Dhamma Pachimana and Pachimana and Kusalana and Dhammana. Open Esaya Pachyena Pachyo. So Purima means earlier, Pachimana means later. So the Kusala Dhammas which are preceding, they serve as a condition for subsequent Kusala Dhamma according to the force of open side, which means strong dependence condition or decisive support condition. Similarly, Purima Purima Kusala Dhamma Pachimanang Pachimanang Akusalanang Dhammanang Kesanchi Upanishad Pachinam. Under certain conditions, the preceding wholesome Dhamma can result become a decisive support for subsequent unwholesome Dhamma. Purima Purima Kusala Dhamma Pachimanang Pachimanang Abhyagatanang Dhammanang Upanishad Pachayena Pachayo. So sometimes the a preceding Kushala Dhamma can become this decisive support for subsequent and uh, indeterminate karma. So that we had seen how the from wholesome to wholesome is quite obvious. We do a wholesome activity, create a wholesome mental state that will give rise to further wholesome states. But in some cases, we may do a wholesome action and then take it personally and create complications and that may result in unwholesome that we had discussed last time. Then Purima Purima Kusala Dhamma Pachimanang Pachimanang Kusalanang Dhammanang Upanishad Pachina Pachyo. So then I had uh, pointed out this in 59 the details are given. When we are generous we may become proud of it and look down upon those who are not as generous. The same kind of conceit can happen when we keep the moral precepts. So even things like generosity and morality may eventually become a condition mm -hmm. for unwholesome state. We can achieve jhanas. For example, Devadatta achieved jhanas and those jhanas became a condition for his unwholesome activities. And we can get trapped in tranquility in practicing vipassana and then again we can't get out of that trap. Then about Akusala Dhamma, Purima Purima Akusala Dhamma, Pachimanang Pachimanang Akusalanang Dhammanang Upanishad Pachena Pachyo. So again same thing, unwholesome Dhammas can later be decisive support for unwholesome. So if you have greed and selfishness and anger, they will naturally give rise to the same kind of things again and again. But he also points out that Purima Purima Kusala Dhamma Pachimanang Pachimanang Kusalanang Dhammanang Kesanchi Upanishad Pachyena Under certain conditions it can also give rise to wholesome states because regret may happen about our past deeds and regret about an evil action and it can encourage us to do wholesome action and Emperor Ashoka is a great example of that. Purima Purima Kusala Dhamma Pachimanang Pachimanang Abhyagatanang Dhammanang Upanishad. So, and it can of course also lead to indeterminate states, which happens in mental states. You know, when we see those various uh, 17 mind movements which we have discussed. Then we have Purima Purima Abhyakata Dhamma Pachimanang Pachimanang Abhyakatanang Dhammanang Upanishad Pachena Pachyo. Abhyakata means indecide, indeterminate things, you know, which are neutral. For example, Vipak Chittas arise. Vipak Chitta will arise in terms of what we see, what we hear, what we touch, and those may give subsequently give rise to pleasant state, unpleasant, unwholesome states, wholesome states, or neutral states, depending on how we respond to them. Then we had Utu Bhojanam Api, Upanishad Pachena Pachena. Utu means the weather, Bhojanam means food. So, food and Weather can also lead to wholesome or unwholesome states. We know that very well. 
Pungalopi, Upanisai Pachi, and Apachi. So, the kind of person we associate, that person can also lead to wholesome or unwholesome mm-hmm. mental states. Senasanampi, the kind of dwelling we have, mm-hmm. kind of wedding we have, Upanisai Pachi, and Apachi. So, the, these are some of the th- material entities which can also lead to uh, wholesome or unwholesome mental states. So, depending on these various categories, the various details which you read, the commentators have divided them into three conditions, sub-conditions, which we have discussed briefly. One was the object decisive condition, which is Arambana Upanishad Pachyo, which we have already discussed, and another is Anantara Upanishad Pachyo, or contingently decisive support conditions. So, then the third is Pakat Upanishad Pachyo, or natural decisive support condition. Now, what is Arambana Upanishad? where the dominant object acts as the main basis. So, we have already studied Adipati Pachya. So, there, because object can be very dominant and it can act as a decisive support for that. Besides being Adipati, it can also be decisive support. Similarly, Anantar means preceding Chitta acts as the basis of succeeding Chitta, which we have seen. And this can happen also in the case of uh, decisive support also. They can also give decisive support to that. This Pakat Upanisha is uh, more uh, versatile. It is something which happens naturally. So, unlike above cases, the Pakat Upanisha will pervade not just immediate state but future remote states also. So, for example, the examples are given the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha have been decisive support for successive generations. Their teachings have been supporting us even today. That is in much later. So the roof, similarly, the fruits which we will reap in the future are decisive support for the conditions done in the present life. We want to become, we want to say, uh, and do the stream entry. Now that is a future expectation. And that is becoming a support for us to practice today. And a very strong support and we want to practice very strongly. So, this is also a, a case of decisive support. But in uh, more uh, general terms, whatever action which we are doing today, and if they lead to results in future, that also will... Turn it is not just, yeah, it is not just that. It is even in the opposite direction, which seems very strange. Because what action we are doing today is strongly supported by our expectation of future. That we will achieve, we will... Uh, get a promotion in job or we'll get a mm. exam, ad, ad, admission in JE, mm. we'll pass that. How much people have put an effort because mm. of that future mental state to achieve, future objective to achieve. So, the what I've added here uh, for the sake of explanation are the extracts from Lady Sayadaw's uh, manual of uh, Abhidhamma where he is talking about it. Pathana Nideshwar, explaining Pathana properly. Because that I think is one of the most uh, clear expositions available, Lady Sayadu's. So I just copied and pasted. So we'll read it there. Why is Pakat Upanese so called? It is so called because it is naturally known to the wise as a distinct sufficing condition. Sufficing means it is sufficient to promote. Note section. No, next 64. 64. The influence of sufficing condition in contiguity pervades only its immediate successor. Anantar Pachyo to ek ke baad next mein asar karega. But that of natural sufficing condition can pervade many remote ones. Therefore, what is in this present life has been seen, heard, smelled, tasted, touched and experienced in days, months, years, long gone by, takes form again at the mind door, even after a lapse of hundred years. When we meditate, we suddenly remember things which have happened long back, if sufficient cause is available. And so people remember their past and can utter such expressions as, I saw it before, I heard it before and so on. Then, so what is the natural sufficing condition elsewhere he has written? All past, present and future, internal and external classes of consciousness, Together with their concomitant, all material qualities, nibbana and concepts, everything, what you can think of, are 
natural sufficing conditions severally related means there can be many other relationships also as the case may be to the, all the present classes of consciousness and their concomitant. So, it is a wide embracing relationship. Whatever affects us very strongly is a decisive support condition. That is how it should be defined. So, he has mentioned the same thing which I read out. Here, the Buddha who passed away and has entered Nibbana, his Dhamma, the fraternity of his sanctified disciples, and the succession of the recognized fraternity, that is the Sangha, are ca causally related to all of us of later generations by way of natural sufficing condition for the cultivation of goods. So, this you can see the strongness. The next one I already read actually. Then he gives an example from day to day life in the next. With the hope of reaping crops in winter, men till the soil and sow the seeds in rainy season, you know, much earlier. Or they do various kinds of work which incur labor and intellect with the hope of getting money upon their completion of work. So, so the objective of getting money after doing some work becomes a decisive support for my doing work today. Now, the crops to be reaped and money to be got are future natural sufficing conditions related to the acquisition of crops and money. In the same manner, most people in the present life do many good deeds, realizing that they will reap the fruits of their deeds in some life hereafter. In this case, those fruits which will be reaped in future are future natural sufficing conditions related to the deeds done in the present life. Deeds done before are also past natural sufficing condition related to the fruits which are to be reaped in future. Thus we see that future natural sufficing condition is as large, as wide as the past. So, the past ke strong actions that they are giving fruits today, so they will become sufficing conditions of what we are doing today and what we do today. So, what we talk about as you know, the latent tendency is getting carried over, this is because of this condition. In the, our stream of consciousness, we say natural, uh, the latent tendencies are anushaya klesa. So, how do they get transmitted from life, one life to another? This is how they get transmitted. This is what is the, uh, the explanation which is given that this, because of this decisive support condition, these things happen. So, so uh, Silesh is saying that isn't this desire of becoming? The it is an explanation of yes it is an explanation of what is going what is the state of consciousness which is happening to us today isn't it mm -hmm. it can be influenced by what is happening in the around us it can be influenced by what is happening immediately before but it can also be influenced by what has happened 10 years ago mm -hmm. so it is an explanation of that it is not uh, talking about uh, ethical or moral consequences of the action. Mm. He is just describing that this is how mind state arises. You know? This is a descriptive uh, analysis of uh, how the mind states arise. Example, when you meditate, you remember things of 10 years ago. Mm. So, those things have become decisive support for what is what mind state we are experiencing now. So, he says this kind of thing can happen. And similarly, you can visualize, I am preparing for an exam and I meditate and I remember oh, my examination is there, there, therefore I should work today. And this meditation is going to help me to gain concentration, isn't it? Mm -hmm. People do like that also. Mm -hmm. So, you can remember that. So, this practice is become a, this is being governed by the expectation of future result. So, both future as well as past can be decisive support condition. Then, in uh, the Pakat Upanissa, in the natural, this is called natural sufficing condition. Silesh is further saying that, uh, but that influence is curved by Vipassana, that is by being here and now. That what? That influence of that past, past. Uh, yeah. actions or past karma is curved uh, or is yeah. uh, reduced by Vipassana. Yeah. Curved means it's not curved, it's really allowed to sublimate. We are meditating and the thought of the past comes because the fact thought has produced a strong impression and we don't react. Then the thought will slowly evaporate, then its intensity, will, its momentum will come down, then we'll again, again some other time it will come, 
it won't come immediately maybe again after one day or next year or we don't know when conditions ripen for that to come again so that thought will come again but with the weak feeble so repeatedly seeing this again and again and again the sankhara loses its moment energy it loses its momentum and then for we feel uh, that we have got free from that sankhara so then that will not appear again So we go to the next condition, pure jat apachya. Pure jat means which arises before. Pure means before, jat means born. So pre in essence it has been translated as. So things which are born before are a condition for what happens now. Mental states which arise now. Chakkhayatnam, chakkhu vinyana dhatu yat, ansampa yutta kanancha dhammanam, pure jat apachya yena apachya yena. Sotayatnam sota vinyana dhatu yatam sampa yutta kanan dhammanam pure jata pachena pachena. Similarly, ghanayatnam, jivayatnam, kayatnam, so all of them. So it's mentioning that all these uh, ayatnam means, chakku ayatnam means the eye base. Sotayatnam means the hearing base, that is the ear, the eye. That is related to the chakku vinyana dhatu, that is arising of the seeing by pure jata and the associated uh, mental states. By pure jat means the eye base has to be present before eye consciousness can arise. This is quite obvious. Similarly, ear base has to be present, body has to be present, nose base has to be present. So the eye base serves as a condition for eye consciousness element and its associated mental states by the force of this pure jata pachya. Then we have Rupayatanam Chakku Vinyana Dhatuya Tansampa Yutta Kanancha Dhammanam Pure Jata Pachina Pachi. So not only are the eye base but also the Rupa. The object has to be there before the eye consciousness can arise. And we see there has to be eye, there has to be an object, and they have to be present before the consciousness can arise. So that is said to be Pure Jata Pachi. So this is the relationship of being present before. So these are the Pure Jata Pachyu examples. Then in the next one, Rupayatanam, Saddayatanam, Gandhayatanam, Rasayatanam, Potabhayatanam, Manodhatu Yatan Sampayutta Kanancha Dhamman, Pure Jata Pachyu Pachyu. So all these uh, Rupa, Sadda, Gandha, all those external objects of the various senses, they also act as the they have to be present before they can interact, the impact can be on the manodhatu. That is the impact of the eye consciousness because we know eye consciousness will ultimately impact on the mind, then only the things will be seen. Mm. So the impact on the manodhatu is also being pointed out that they also act as precede, pre-present or pre-nascent entities for the arising of manodhatu. Then, yam rupam nissai mano dhatu ya cha mano vinyana dhatu cha vattanti and those rupas which dependent on that, tam rupam mano dhatu ya tan sampayutta kanan cha dhammanam pure jata pachya na pachya. So, the physical matter also, dependent on which the uh, mind states arise, that also is acts as, as condition for that mind elements and associated mental states by the force of this Pure Jata Pachya. So it is also a condition for Mano Dhatu as well as Mano Vinyana Dhatu. So for Mano Vinyana Dhatu means mind consciousness element and Mano Dhatu you remember those uh, Sampiti, Charana Chitta and others which follow immediately the Vinyana Dhatu which we had studied in those 17 mind moments. And they also happen at the time of death and the relinking. Whenever the death occurs, then the next consciousness arises. So the it has to be present, then only the next consciousness will arise. Then Mano Vinyana Dhatu Yatan Sampayutta Kanancha Dhammana Kinchikale Pure Jata Pachyena Pachyo Kinchikale Na Pure Jata So in under certain conditions, Mano Vinyana Dhatu and the associated uh, tamsampritta kanancha dhammanang and the associated chetsikas 
Under certain conditions they are purajat, under certain conditions they are not purajat. When is it? So when the mind state arises directly on the basis of thinking, then they arise together, then they are sahajat. When the mind uh, consciousness arises because of these objects which we have seen, then those objects have to be present first and then they, they will be seen by the mind. Because eventually it will be the mind which will recognize the objects. Mm-hmm. Chakku Vinyan will only see something. So then Chakku Vinyan goes to the Sampati Charan Chitta and then the investigating consciousness and then the Javanas. So there the actual cognition will take. And then it will go to the mind. All those things will go to the mind. So the mind will actually, so the Mano Vinyan Dhatu can, if it is referring to the objects, then it objects will have to be present before. Mm. If it is referring to thoughts, then thoughts and Mano Vinyan Dhatu will arise simultaneously. Like any other consciousness arises simultaneously with its objects. So that is the point being made here. Because when we see something, the object and the consciousness arise together. So the mental factors arise together with that. Mental factors and the consciousness arise together. So the same thing is being pointed out that under certain conditions, the mental factors and the consciousness will arise together. Under certain conditions, they will arise later. Sudhakar is saying that how Vinyana uh, uh, Pachya Nama uh, How Vinyana Pachya Nama Rupa related to this uh, Purichat? The Vinyana, if you see the dependent origination, then we have Sankhara Pachya Vinyana, Vinyana Pachya Nama Rupa. So now Vinyana and Nama Rupa, what is the Pachya relationship? Is There are multiple relationships. Okay. So I think when we will discuss dependent origination, then it will be better. Because it's not just one, there are multiple relationships which are happening. The Rupa is, the, maya, the Rupa which is generated by mind, Chitraja Rupa, that will arise simultaneously. But there may be other Rupa. And the at the time of Patisandhi, that is at the time of death and relinking, they will arise simultaneously. At other times, if you remember, they will arise at different moments. So this we will discuss more when we come to dependent origination. Briefly, I have just mentioned. Any other? Is it clear? This is really good. Then we have Pachayata Pachyu, which means post nascent which arises later so how can something which arises later influence us now sounds funny no? so see that pachha jata chitta chetsika dhamma pure jata semasya kayasya pachha jata pachi na pachi so the pachha jata chitta chetsika dhamma those chitta and chetsika dhamma which arise later Pure jata se imas se kaya se pachcha jata pachche na pachcha. They affect the uh, preceding body, serve as a condition for preceding body by the force of post nascent conditions. Now what does it mean? Subsequent consciousness is serving as a condition for preceding body. Now it is basically because the mental states and the body states, there is a difference in the time period. The rupa are last 17 mind moments and mind moments are 17 mind moments have happened so the rupa which arises earlier and later arising nama dhamma we condition the already arisen rupa dhamma because rupa is going to last 17 moments and the mind moment which arises after the arising of rupa can influence it because of the chittaja rupa because of the mind born so you can have a person and he gets angry and then it affects his body while to begin with the anger is arisen later you see, in the mind moment state of course we can't distinguish so fastly because it is arising in a very very rapid rate so the subsequent nama dhamma that is subsequent mental states say the bottom, there is a rupa which arises and just after one mind moment the anger arises now the anger which has arisen later will influence this rupa, which has arisen earlier. So even if anger arises 10 mind moments later, because rupa is going to stay for 17 mind moments, so that rupa will be influenced. 
So that is the case which is mentioned. So the example which is uh, given the, in the notes, I think that may not be there, I'll read out. Every posterior chitta that springs into being causally relates to the still existing groups of prior corporeal qualities born of Kamma and Chitta and Uttu and Ahara by way of post essence. For example, the very first Bhavanga Chitta in relation to the material phenomena born of Kamma at the moment of Patisandhi. Then he mentions again, given the fact that our body on its demise begins to decay when we no longer have an associated consciousness, it is very obvious that our body is preserved by sustained by our mind. Because the moment mind is out, body starts to decay. Negative mental states like anger, worry, etc. contribute to unhealthy physical phenomena, whereas positive mental states like love and kindness to healthy mental phenomena, which we already discussed. It is therefore undeniable that our mind has great impact on body. According to post-nascence condition, that is Paschajata, the physical phenomena of our body are conditioned or preserved by our mind that arise 1 to 17 moments later than those physical phenomena. So that is the point being made. Now the example which uh, Lady Sayadaw gives is, just as rainwater promotes the growth and development of vegetation which is already existing, so the subsequent mental states support the pre-arisen mental phenomena. Say there are uh, trees which are already existing and rain comes afterwards and it supports that growth of those states. So the same thing is being quoted and this is the example Lady Sayada has given. It says similar, so the similarly the subsequently arisen mental states support the pre-arisen mental material phenomena so that they continue to produce the same kind of material phenomena in succession. So it's a bit of a, a counterintuitive thing that a mental state arising later should influence the body which is arising. But this point is worth noting. Next one, of course, we are all aware of that. Asevan Pachyo. Asevan means repetition, doing something again and again. So we know by repetition how much we can strengthen the mind states. So Purima Purima Kusala Dhamma, Pachimanang Pachimanang Kusalanang Dhamma, Asevan Pachyena Pachyo. Purima Purima Kusala Dhamma, Pachimanang Pachimanang Kusalanang Dhamma, Asevan Pachyena Pachyo. Purima Purima Kiriya Bhakta Dhamma, Kiriya Bhyakata Dhamma, Pachimanang Pachimanang Kiriya Bhakya Tan Dhamma, Asevan Pachyena Pachyo. So it's quite obvious, I think. Previously, if you do the certain wholesome actions again and again, that will strengthen subsequent wholesome actions. If you do unwholesome actions again and again and again, repeat them, they will strengthen the unwholesome mental states. And if you do functional things, Kriya Abhyakata, those things which are functional, which is applicable primarily for Arhans, then they will strengthen the, the Abhyakata Dhamma again and again. So the examples which are given is that just the conditioning mental states cause the conditioned mental states Mental phenomena similar to itself to arise with increased power and efficiency once it has ceased. Then you do repetition and again and again. So just as a student by repeated study becomes more proficient in his lessons, singer in her singing and so on. And if this is exactly is the logic behind chanting. You know? if they do chanting again and again and again mm -hmm. with the idea that it will sink into the mind. Then they, if you know the meaning, then it will sinks into your mind. So it becomes a part of your... Uh, knowledge base and eventually leads to wisdom. Mr. Zakar is saying that <coughs> Asevan Pachya is the same as what Goenkaji says in saying uh, multiplication of, I don't know, he is not completing the line, but uh, Sudhakar, you want to complete the uh, sentence? Multiplication of wholesome or unwholesome. The, what Asevan is mentioning is by repetition of that. You know, when we hear Sati Pathana Bhavita Bahulikita, mm. 
that a person does it again and again, mm. then the strengthening of that man, mind state happens. So, Sati Pathana also he says, no, evam bhave satta varsani, for seven years one who practices Sati Pathana in this manner, mm. then he will become yeah. uh, enlightened. So, that is the kind of, by the force of that event is happening, by the force of Asevana Pachyo, that is called Asevana Pachyo, that is the conditionality of repetition. The solution is further saying that uh, if chanting helps, why are we discouraged in 10 day uh, or after 10 days? Yeah, because they are people, you know, don't come with that, uh, you know, the new students and all, they won't understand it and then we have the mindset of taking it as a same thing as Kirtan Bhajan, you know, mm -hmm. because we don't understand it properly, that is the problem. So, senior meditators who understand things properly, I strongly feel that they should do chanting at their home or listen to chanting at their home at least mm -hmm. with the proper understanding of the meaning. That's very helpful, very helpful. Understanding of meaning is very helpful because if you do it just without understanding, mm -hmm. then it will become like a, mm -hmm. a ritual. It will become a ritual. The idea is that we should know the meaning of it and then that will sink in. You know, just as we practice Metta Sutta today, so we saw how, what are the requirements, he should be gentle, he should be, then only Metta will work. Mm -hmm. You know, he should be humble, he should not be arrogant, he should be soft spoken, all those are preconditions laid and then he can practice Metta. So, if we understand, read that and understand the meaning and then practice it again and again, we'll, meaning will also sink in and then it will become our knowledge base. But in a 10 day course, because of our past problems here in our society, you know, they tend to think it, it as a Chalo Bhajan Kirtan Ora and then they just uh, sing it. It becomes more like a singing exercise than like a uh, being meditative exercise. Meditative, being fully mindful, mindful of what, what is happening. So, the next one, we have just written down all these points which I have spoken, so we can read. Repetition condition, the Asevan Pachya pertains only to Nama. That is to Javana Chittas because there the repetition is happening. You remember, seven mental states of Javana happen one after other, so mm -hmm. they strengthen each other. Arising in the process of Chittas, Javana Chittas can be Kushla, Akushla, or in case of Arhans, they can be Kriya Chittas. With regard to Chittas of the sense sphere, Kama Uchara Chittas, there are the seven Javanas, which you already discussed when we talked of process Chittas, and they are all of the same Jati. Once, if the first Javana will be a kushala, then it will keep on becoming strengthened and can strengthen. So, this is how the conditioning of uh, this offers and strengthens the mind states. Good. Next is Kamapachyo. So, I think we will stop here because we have covered a good spectrum today. If there are any questions on what we have done, we can take them. And then start from this Kamma Pachya because it will need more detailed exposition. Mm. Kamma being very important. <laughs> mm. So we'll discuss it next time. So, uh, Sudhakar is saying that uh, Goenkaji does ask children in children courses to chant with him. Mm. Sapka Mangal, Sapka Mangal. Yeah, that's true. And also he says he also asks the students to chant the formalities. Uh, yeah, chanting means recitation, repetition. Right. We do it once, that is only done once, that's not chanting. That's not chanting. That is only uh, undertaking the woe so that people become serious about it. <laughs> that is only once being done. So asevan means you are repeating it again and again and again. Not just saying it once. In monasteries, they do every day, morning, evening. Okay. Yeah, morning chanting, evening chanting. So they have their own format. Mm -hmm. And they do straight Pali chantings. Sometimes Pali with English translation because if people don't understand, or Pali with Burmese, uh, this Thai translation as we saw. Right? So that people understand the meaning also simultaneously.
Any more questions or comments? Yeah. And this was Akash just mentioning that without these uh, chantings, there would not be uh, Tipitika. Yeah. Because through the chanting traditions, yes, that's uh, true. these have been preserved. It is only through oral recitation that the no. whole thing has been preserved. The whole thing has been preserved. That's so true. true. And Slay is saying the thank. This was good. Good. So we will stop for the day. Uh, next Sunday will not be available because I am going tomorrow to uh, Chennai to Sudhakar's hometown, probably. <laughs> going to Tirivanmalai for meditating for five days there. In Ramana Maharshi's ashram. In Ramana Maharshi's ashram. So we'll be, Arpan is already there, so we'll both of us stay there for five days and meditate. Yeah. So I'll be coming on Saturday very late night. We don't know with fog it may come get very late. So next Sunday would be difficult. Yes. So we we'll meet the Sunday after that. Yes. Which is that task yeah? 27, 29, 5th of February. Right. So next Sunday we'll have a break. So, so, so Sudhakar is casually mentioning that he is Hyderabadi. I see, not uh, not Tamil. Not Tamil. That's, that's. For us here, it is very difficult to figure out. <laughs> yeah. Because I think from north, if we don't have interacted with yeah. people, then uh, it's very difficult to identify. Know some, yeah, even from langu language also, it's difficult to identify. Yeah. Which language the person? From name, speaking. it is comparatively difficult. Yeah. He is saying that at least people in North say "sab <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of so. It's I had a long chanting desire to go to Ramana Maharshi Ashram. So after 68 years, it has manifested. <laughs> we have not gone in. I mean, right from uh, childhood, we had a great respect for him. So. Never could manage. Good friends, thank you very much. So Sudhakar has this question that uh, what does you think of uh, Moji? Yeah, he seems to be a nice person and he's a disciple of Ramana Maharshi. So to the extent that they, I mean, uh, to the extent of, I think our teachings of the Buddha and teachings of Ramana Maharshi match substantially. Only thing is that uh, the key thing difference is that uh, they take uh, I to be uh, the nature of I to be the pure consciousness. Buddha even puts it aside and doesn't call it I. Mm -hmm. So what uh, the Advaita tradition says, who am I? So they say I am that pure Chidananda Rupa Shivoham Shivoham, you know, that's it. Mm. So if you put it aside, that I am that, that's why I, in our discussion say, if you say there is that, then that's absolutely in congruence mm. with the Buddha's teaching. So Buddha even leaves aside that I notion mm. from pure consciousness. He does mention about that uh, Anidasana Vinyana and others, which is a bit, uh, you know, people have different opinions. So the teachings of Buddha, I mean, uh, the key thing which uh, has interested us uh, right from beginning, me especially, is this issue no? of uh, I am not the body, the mind, the intellect and so on, which is the basis of uh, inquiry, mm. which is exactly what Anathalakhana Sutta teaches us. Mm. So if you can get established in that, that's a great, then you are uh, entering the stream. So if you follow the, the Pandha's uh, path of ten fetters, the notion of I completely vanishing is for Arahant. But even up to Anagami, that they say this smell of I remains, but he doesn't identify I with the body-mind complex, but he has a feeling that there is some I. So, the Ramana Maharshi and Muji and all that, I mean, the, he's from the same tradition, you know, Ramana Maharshi and Punjaji and 
Muji and others. They, they all follow that, uh, they all believe in that uh, the teachings of the Buddha are exactly the same. They actually believe they are exactly the same. Mm-hmm. Muji is of course specifically mentions in his uh, discourses many times. So when he pays respects, he pays to Ramana Maharshi as well as to Buddha. <laughs> so they seem to be nice people. I'm not personally, I've listened to his discourses, many of them, they're quite good. Quite good. He's coming to Hardwar in February, March, so maybe. Yeah, I think that's what... Uh, I might go there for a few uh, days. Sudhakar Su- is also mentioning that is coming to Rishikesh for one month. Yeah. I can go there for a day or so. See. We, we heard no, that Senasanopi, uh, Utu Bhojanampi, so the Pugalopi, these, they can be decisive support. Person, the, the environment in which you sit and meditate, that mm-hmm. can have a great impact. In so it's good to go to places like Ramana, where Ramana Maharshi has stayed all of his life and sanctified that place. So I look forward to going there. I just wait for uh, that is typing something. Good, good. <coughs> He's saying, uh, thanks sir, wish the complete enlightenment at Arunachala. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Sudhakar. So, uh, any more questions before we close? Uh, Silesh is saying, Metta to all. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, this community is supporting us all. It's nice. So we're joining together, we support each other, is it? Mm. Yes, and Minakshi, she, Minakshi ji is saying that we can have retreat in uh, Tirintu, uh, Tirunu Mala in summer. That's a question from her. I don't understand. Uh, having a retreat in Tirunu Malai. Tirunu Malai. Malai. Don't, if somebody wants to join in this time, you are welcome, but in summer we never know what's going to happen. I am told this is a good place, weather for the, going to that place. I was told that November to March is a good weather there. November to March, yeah. And it's, the, it's a matter of chance that I can, Arpan is there and he, in fact, he said, why don't you join? I said, okay, he'll also join. <laughs> Happens yeah. like that, serendipity. Yeah, Arpan is the one who, was, <laughs> who happened to be there. So yeah. he said, I think he is the one who yeah. first went to uh, Thailand and said that yeah. he spent a week, week there yeah. at Nanachat and then yeah. everything opened. So he's kind of showing us yes. <laughs> the path. And so uh, Sudhakar is saying that how do we uh, repay your debt? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I also have to repay it. Maybe we'll someday get together. <laughs> and he says that uh, this uh, doubt arises in mind again and again. We are far apart, yet we feel so close, though we never met in person. <laughs> that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Yeah. Someday we'll meet. Yeah. And Silesh is also saying that I agree. Hundred uh, percent feel connected. Yeah. Good. Because the connections are at the mind level, you know, and the mind does not really. You know, the if you study the Buddha's teachings on anidhasana vijnana and on manifest consciousness, which is pervading the hmm. cosmos, we are all ripples in that un- <laughs> unmanifested consciousness. Like, you know, the analogy I take it is of an electromagnetic field. It's all present everywhere. And different instruments catch it and present it. Hmm. So it's all uh, 
Buddha's parmi, which is present everywhere, <laughs> and we are benefiting from that. Okay, uh, thanks, Silesh, thanks, Raghav, thanks, everybody. We'll meet uh, next to next week. Thank you. Uh, have a good day. Yes, uh, on uh, fifth. <coughs>